In today's show, recapping the Blazers' loss to the Mavs on Friday night and how the team can find a balance between Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp as they move forward. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblazers reporter, Mike Richman. You are listening to another episode of Locked on Blazers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen coming at you Monday through Friday, every single weekday. So make it a part of your daily routine to make it your first listen. It's Locked on Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, going to recap the Blazers game against the Dallas Mavericks. Talk about... Uh, an aggressive shooting night from two rookies and the balance between Shaden Sharp and Amphrey Simons as the Blazers move forward with a young backcourt that has skills, but they got to find the balance of them two playing together. That's what we'll do in today's show. Plus, they play the Clippers on Monday night. We'll look ahead a little bit to that game. But let's, before, before we get too much further forward, let's do what we do. The fastest recap in the West. The Blazers lose 125-112. And early in this one, it looked like it was going to be a blowout. Blazers are playing without, you know, their, their sort of core veterans. Malcolm Brogdon and, De- and uh, DeAndre Ayton both missed this game with knee soreness. Jeremy Grant is still out in the concussion protocol. So the Blazers roll out a starting lineup of Anthony Simon, Shaden Sharp, Duop Reith, Tumani Kamara, and Matisse Thibel. An intriguing but just not straight up, just not talented enough, not, not enough firepower to compete with the really good teams. But the Blazers don't go away. So even when it looked ugly early, they're down 37-22 after one. They trail by as many as 19 in the second quarter. They hang in the game. They find themselves only down 11 in uh, at halftime, 60-71. to And in the middle of that second quarter, uh, Kyrie Irving got hurt. He, he uh, was a drive to the rim, and Dwight Powell came over to help on defense. And he as he comes down, Kyrie, Kyrie hits the floor, and as, as Powell comes down, he steps on or lands on kind of it kind of looks like he stepped on Kyrie's foot um I thought he got kicked in the head is what I what I saw from my seat in the arena but but uh seeing it again it's it, it just it, Kyrie was clearly hurt they call timeout he stays and he takes free throws because if you take the free throws you're allowed to come back in the game but then he immediately went to the back and didn't return didn't come out of the back and so the the uh the Mavs finished the game without Kyrie and Luca and Luca at all had to finish off the Blazers and they were able to hold off the charge from Portland in the second half so Blazers down 11 in after after two heading into halftime immediately cut it to a four-point game in the third quarter. Just just a team that just simply does not go away, but find themselves down 90-97 after three, and they make a push to open the quarter. A little 8-2 spurt to uh, to start the fourth quarter. It's a one-point game. Amphrey Simons has a floater with just under 10 minutes left, 9.58 on the clock as the ball goes in. It's a one-point game. 10 minutes left is an eternity, um, but like this is the Blazers from down 19, they're super shorthanded. They're playing a decent team. Like the Mavs are pretty bad on on offense, or excuse me, on defense. They're pretty bad. But like, they have one of the best players in the world in Luca. Like this is a good. Like the Mavs are probably a playoff team, uh, even a low level one. But they're they're like this is this is hanging tough with one of the good teams in the West. One point game. Ten minutes left. Luka Doncic hits a three. I was sh- stunned that Jason Kidd didn't call timeout, and and Luka kind of just dribbled to the top of the key and hit a three. It's what superstars do. It's like this possession stinks. I'll just I'll just make a shot. Uh, hits like a you know two steps beyond the line, straight away three pointer. Uh, then he hits a little jumper. Then he finds Marvin Bag or excuse me. Then he finds Derek Lively for an alley oop, and all of a sudden it's an eight point game with about two minutes later and the Blazers can't can't ever get closer than they were in that brief moment with 10 minutes left and they lose 125 112 that's your fastest recap in the west to the box score we go Anthony Simons 30 points eight assists five boards uh he did turn the ball over six times he didn't shoot particularly Really well, 10 of 21 from the floor, but I thought Ant played great in this game. He got a ton of defensive attention um, and he handled it well. He got out of the traps well. Like, you know, they were sending two to the ball. He was getting off the ball well. He shot it well. Um, like, uh, out off of when he got one on one pressure, he, he, he like made tough shot making. I don't know if he shot super efficiently, but tough shot making. Like, he was he was really good in this game. Um, he's He's the guy who can get his own shot with the mo at the highest level on this team and they need him to sometimes you need him just to shoot it and he did and he made it four of ten from three uh 
Shaden Sharp, excellent, excellent. 24 points, 9 boards, 5 assists, um, 7 of 15 from the floor. Didn't shoot well from 2, but 5 of 10 from 3. Um, you know, hard to nitpick 24, 9, and 5 from a 20-year-old. He, Shaden, Sharp was, Shaden Sharp was darn good, and they could have used a little bit more of him, quite frankly. We'll talk about that to close the show. Uh, 14 from Tumani Kamara, who took 20 shots. Unbelievable. Do I breathe? 10.6 boards, 9 from Matisse Thibel. 10 off the bench from Scoot Henderson, missed 13 shots. 14, 4 of 17 from the floor, 0 of 6 from 3. 13 missed field goals, 10 points. Not a great game from Scoot. I thought he was... I thought he was objectively bad in this one. Uh, Jabari Walker had 10 and 3, 5 off the bench for Chris Murray. And Justin Minaya was the ninth guy who got action in this one. And he uh, went scoreless in 8 minutes. Um, but at least he plays hard. At least he plays hard. On the other side, Luka Doncic, 32 points to lead the way. Um, he was 3 of 14 from 3. The Mavs shot terribly from deep. 12 of 39. But the Blazers kept themselves in the game by shooting a lot and making them 18 of uh, 53 from three um you know probably too many threes from your boy Tumani Kamara and uh, from Scoot Henderson who combined to go two of 16 from three but um 53 is probably a little high for this particular Blazers team but 18 makes is kind of how you stay in the game when you don't have a ton of firepower and they and they did uh on the Mavs side, Dante Exum, was, I think, is the best game I've ever seen him play. 23 points, 6 boards, 7 assists. He was good on defense, too. He was great. 20 off the bench for Tim uh, for Tim Hardaway Jr. Kyrie had 11 in his 13 minutes before leaving. 10 and 9 from Derek Lively. Uh, 14 from Derek Jones Jr. I didn't finish Luka's line. He finished with 32 points and 10 assists. He controlled the game. He controlled the game. Uh, uh, 7 off the bench from Steph Curry. Dwight Powell had 4 uh Marquise Morris scored two in his his time, and AJ Lawson had two of the most memorable points in the game, coast to coast for a slam, outrageous dunk, uh, one of three. I remember the one. Uh, so, I, I I think, you know, this this game kind of encapsulates who the Blazers have been. They are a team that doesn't get blown out very often, but they also don't win. They are, as I told someone after the game. Um, I'll tell you who I told. Casey Holdall of Trailblazers.com. Uh, the Blazers are, are have a knack for being not out of it, but not in it. And this was a game where they were not out of it, but not in it, right? They're down 19. They come all the way back. They're basically never getting blown out after after the after halftime. Like they're just they're just there hanging around, not quite close enough to ever say, okay, well, if they if they get the ball here and they 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 can they can make a make a push. They can make a push. They can really do it. But it's not quite, never had the ball in the final four minutes where you're like, okay, a bucket and they're in this thing. Uh, they were just, you know, down eight or nine. And it's like, well, Luca's going to score and, uh, you know, they're going to get, they're going to get a Derek Jones Jr. three from the corner. And that's going to be that because you just have to play perfect. Never out of it, but never truly in it. That's kind of who, who they've been. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, the sequence when they cut it to one with 10 minutes left is kind of a perfect encapsulation of, uh, what I think went wrong in this game. Uh, and then I want to talk about a little to close the show. Um, the, the play from Avery Simons and Shane Sharp. They both played really well, but the Blazers need to strike or need to hunt for a balance between those two gentlemen a little bit. Can you get the best of both? Let's talk about all of that in the second and third segments. First, let's talk prize picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. Uh, I play prize picks on the app. You can also play it on prizepicks.com. I like it because it's quick. You pick an entry between two and six players with whatever sport you're looking for. For me, I play the NBA. So it's things like points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. And it's just me versus prize picks stats projections. They set the number 24 and a half for Anthony Simons, and I pick more or less than the number they set. Uh, you can make an entry really quickly. Price Picks wants me to say 60 seconds, but I, I can't do it in 60 seconds because I am more meticulous in my decision making. It takes me nearly 90 seconds to make an entry. So we're talking a minute and a half. Look through it, the selections that day, bang, 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 more or less than the Price Picks projections that they've set. Hits, hit send and win your money quickly. You get safe and fast withdrawals once you win. You don't have to play the NBA. You can play the NHL or NFL, and they even have combo picks if that's what you're into. So if you want to have fun playing daily fantasy sports, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use that code locked on NBA for first deposit match up to $100. They'll match you dollar for dollar on your first deposit up to 100 bucks. So if you want to just, you know, dip your toe in, put $20 in, 
They'll match you 20 bucks. You want to say 50, they'll match you up to $50, up to $100, dollar for dollar on your first deposit. But you got to go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the promo code locked on NBA. That's prize picks. Daily fantasy made easy. All right. So this game, this box score is something to behold from the Mavs game. I don't think the Blazers played poorly, and I don't want to paint them as a team that played poorly. I don't think that's true. I think they are a team that was deeply shorthanded and was relying on Anthony Simons, for the most part, to bail them out. But the Mavericks played a specific style of defense that kind of the Blazers couldn't crack. They were going to send two to the ball on 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 Anthony Simons. When he ran pick and rolls, they were going to send two to the ball. Absolutely, they were just going to pressure him, get it out of his hands, and make other people beat him. And even when they didn't fully double team, they showed really aggressive help all the way to the nail. The nail is the middle of the foul line. There's literally, if you ever played basketball, there's literally a nail there. Go look for it. Helping super aggressively all the way to the nail. So they're cheating over, they're packing the paint, they're daring the Blazers to shoot threes. The Blazers took 53 of them. And who they're choosing to help off of was a lot of Tumani Kamara and a lot of Scoot Henderson, and particularly two. And Tumani Kamara is really fun. I enjoy the I enjoy his style. I enjoy his spirit. I think he plays his butt off. Um, he talks smack to everyone. Like he immediately when Markeith Morris got into the game, he started talking smack to Markeith Morris. Like he's just easy to root for, right? But he took 20 shots in this game. That's outrageous. He can't do that. The Blazers cannot win games when Tumani Kamara takes 20 shots. Um, someone asked me after the game, and I will allow them to remain anonymous. Do I think that um, that Tumani Kamara will ever attempt more than 20 field goals in a game? I think this is going to be right up there, right? We'll monitor it for the rest of the season. How close does he get to 20 field goals? Like, this was a game in which the Mavericks said, we are going to put pressure on your best offensive player. We are going to load up and stack the paint, and we are going to ignore the second-round rookie from three because we don't think he can beat us taking open three-pointers. And Tamani Kamara said, maybe I can. To the tune of 2 for 10 from 3. He was 4 of 10 inside the arc. It's not like he shot well on 2s either. And a lot of his buckets, 3 of them, were putbacks, right? Like the, the, the individual offense he went and tried to create, what didn't work out either. And uh, uh, Chauncey Billups mentioned this after the game, that he thought Tumani just was a little out of control. Bad decision making on offense. And this is like the difference in what coaches can can do and what players actually do when the game starts. That's why, it's why I think that the talent is the biggest thing here. It's like, you can run a set, but like when the ball gets into players' hands, they're making decisions and Tamani's decision making was poor in this game. When, the, when he is not being guarded, he needs to run quick dribble handoffs. Say, okay, they're not guarding me. Let me find Shaden Sharp and run a handoff for him real quick and just... Handoff, set a screen. If my guy is way in the paint, if I set a ha- dribble handoff and set it and get even a little bit of body on a handoff, Shaden's going to get a wide open look. He's going to he's going to be able to dribble into a wide open wide open jumper if he wants it. So, just better decision making from two. I thought that was a problem. Um, Scoot Anderson was just straight up bad in this game. He's bad. Uh, I thought he's made a lot of progress since he's come back, and even the nights when he hasn't shot well, which is every night for Scoot Henderson. But like he's he's had some nights where he's where the bricks have been there, but he's played well, and it's obvious that he's played well. I, d- I don't think he played well in this game. I thought he took some crazy pull ups. I thought he drove to the rim, um, he, like just out of control, and took some sort of in between tough layups that he that are too hard for him. Um, I, I thought he was just just generally out of control. He had a catch late in that. Um, it, in that, in that so 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter where he just got got his feet moving too quickly and traveled unguarded two steps behind the three point line just too excited to get into what it's going to be and, and traveled like there's going to be I think we've 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 seen enough of scoot to realize um that there's going to be some bumps along the way uh we're waiting for the peaks we've had a lot of valleys but like this game was a bad scoot game, and I think that it, I I think you should be comfortable saying this was not the good version of scoot because that's what not it wasn't it wasn't the good version of scoot. Um, you know I think 
I'm not sure exactly how they unlock him at this point. I think it's going to be him developing a better sense. You know, I thought coming in, and I'll admit that I was totally wrong about this, that I thought one of the strengths of Scoot's game was going to be feel. And maybe the jump shot wouldn't be there, maybe the pull-up stuff wouldn't be there, but his feel, his like his his sort of his reading of the game would be really highly developed. And the little bit that I've seen him play, I thought he had a really nice feel for it. He does not have a feel for this level of basketball yet. He is turboing. Um, and he's just holding down that turbo button uh, too often, and I think sometimes he struck a balance with it. I think against the Mavs, he didn't. Um, the other thing, before we get into those sort of the stretch that encapsulates what's wrong with the Blazers and talk a little about Shaden Sharp, is um, Portland played really aggressive defense against the Golden State Warriors, and it really worked. It really worked. They went small. They pressured the ball really hard. They double team. They helped behind the double team. They put pressure on the ball at you know 70 feet from the rim, 90 feet from the rim, made it tough on everybody because the Warriors are quite literally the worst rim team in the league. They do not put pressure on the rim. Draymond doesn't do it. Clay doesn't do it. Andrew Wiggins, I guess, doesn't do it anymore. You know, it, that's... Steph, Steph is capable, but that is not what he's going to do every time down the floor is like drive to the rim and get buckets like they're, um, you know, loon, big loon, my man. I love, I love Kevon Looney. Like that's, he's, you know, he's, he needs help, right? He needs, he's, he's a life raft. He needs, he's not someone who, he doesn't have his own engine. So he's going to need, he's going to need help to get, to get himself buckets, right? So you can pressure the hell out of that team. And they're not going to beat you with rim touches. They're not going to beat you with rim pressure. They're not going to beat you at the cup. And it worked against that scheme worked, but the Blazers, like they're kind of just shorthanded. They are who they are, you know, like the, the, I, this isn't really a fault necessarily of the coaching staff or the, or the players, but like they tried that same pressure defense against the Mavs and the Mavs ate them up. The Mavs ate them up. They, um, they, the first play of the game, they sent two to the ball off the tip off and Luka Doncic just said, okay, cool. Throw it in the middle of Derek Lively, easy bucket in the middle of the paint. Um, I thought there were a couple times, particularly in the first half, and I thought the Blazers cleaned this up after halftime, where the full court pressure, the really tough pressure on the guards, and it, whether it was Exum or or Tim Hardaway Jr. or Luca, particularly, it's like they were, and and a little bit of Kyrie when he was still in there early in the game, um, they the pressure hurt the Blazers. Playing guarding ninety feet from the rim hurt the Blazers because the Mavs were able to beat that pressure right away and then get a running start with an advantage. Well, if you have if you're in the backcourt guarding and you get beat with that pressure, then you've got to uh, got to help behind. If you help behind and the help has to start at thirty five feet, okay. When well, I've got a five on four, the whole like the whole width of the half court, you're going to get whatever shots you want. And I thought the Mavs early in the game when they were building their big lead. Um, really just ate up the the Blazers pressure defense. I don't think they dialed it back. I think they just got a little more. Um, the the defense stayed aggressive. They just they were able to to not get beat as often. Um, and that just goes to show you it's like the the style of defense you want to play in some ways is going to be dictated by the other team. Um, you can. Pl- you can't always dictate the terms, um, and I thought the Mavs did a good job of of taking advantage of what the Blazers, uh, what the Blazers want to do. Okay, uh, this will lead into the, the to the final segment of the show because it's it's about balance. Amphrey Simons hits a floater. Nine minutes and fifty eight seconds left. Ten minutes left in the game. Hits a floater, cuts it to one. And the the 10 minutes left, you, you haven't put your horses back in, right? Like this is typically that first four minutes to first six minutes of the fourth quarter. You are trying to play a bench lineup so your starters can rest and come back in and close the game out. But the Blazers cut into it right there. They, you know, they make a nice little push. They open the fourth quarter with, with Amphrey Simons and a bench unit on the floor. And then they do not get shots you want in, uh, in this stretch. So, they come down. Scoot gets called for that turnover I mentioned, where he just he's just gets happy feet and runs and 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 uh, quick, you know, just kind of Fred Flintstones it, feet chop before he gets going. Gets called for a travel. Whatever. I mean, that's like I don't think that's it, it's not it's not ideal, and you want him to be like, relax a little bit, but like whatever. Um, you're you'll some of that happens. The next three times down the floor. The Blazers have a Jabari Walker miss wide open three, a Tumani Kamara miss wide open three, and a Tumani Kamara miss semi-contested soft closeout three-pointer. I don't think the Blazers are going to magically have Jabari Walker and Tumani Kamara become good three-point shooters this season. Um, Every time they shoot three-pointers, it is a win for the defense. There is some stuff you can't do about that, right? Um, You, when you're shorthanded like this, you got those gentlemen have to play. They probably have to play period, right? Cause they're pretty good on defense and they play hard and 
to Marty Kamara is so much of like, um, he's been a, he's been a really good sort of and a heartbeat is not the right word, but he's 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 been the guy who kind of sets the tone for the Blazers and how they want to play. But you can see how over the last month his his minutes have not always come at the end of games because that is a win for the defense. And Jabari Walker just can't, just can't shoot at the NBA level yet. Um, hopefully he will be able to because he's uh, I I I like him, but um, he shoots bricks. Um, he's worse shooting in year two than he was in year one. And he was a bad shooter in year one. Um, he's he's got to get there, and if he gets there, then the, the shot looks better, but it goes in less. So um, uh, he'll figure it out hopefully. But you can't really coach around that. Can't really coach around that. That is what it is. That 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 right there is just the nature of the Blazers roster, and it's going to be all all year long. And it was obvious from you know game two of the season that they were not going to have they were going to have lineups that are pretty light on shooting, and these guys were going to be part of it. Um, I think that speaks to the personnel and how you can teams are able to you know why their offense struggles right now is because teams are able to say okay let's put pressure on the ball and dare these guys to shoot. With bench lineups and with lineups with several non-shooters in there, it just is what it is. But what the Blazers have to do and what the trick is for them is finding a balance in the moments that they do have shooting and finding, when they do have their best players on the court, finding a balance that works for them and allows them to be good and aggressive and um, harder to guard. And part of that harder to guard is striking a balance between Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons. Let's talk about that balance and Shaden Sharp's fourth quarter usage. We won't get too nerdy because I think you can see it better than you can quantify it. Let's talk about let's talk about balance and getting the best out of good youngsters to close the show. First, let's talk FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And they want to give you some free money to play around with. It is the NFL season. In fact, I'm recording this in the middle of an NFL Sunday. But you still got Monday Night Football coming up. You got Thursday Night Football. You got the playoffs rolling along. And right now, if you place any $5 money line bet on an NFL game or whatever sport you're into, you can get $150 in bonus bets. So whether you are getting in on Monday night football action or whether there's basketball, NBA basketball games every single night of the week, why not put down a $5 money line bet at locked on at fanduel.com slash locked on and you get 150 bucks in bonus bets to play with. So you can bet on things like spreads, player props, over unders, and more. So one more time, visit fanduel.com slash locked on and just have fun this NFL season and the whole sporting season as we head into winter. That's FanDuel, an official spark, official partner of the NFL. Still a pass first point guard. I'm still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. One of, I got an email about this and then I saw people talking about it on r slash rip city. Shout out to the Redditors out there. People getting upset and making memes. You're my people though. I need you. So get upset, make memes, listen to the podcast. But the the sort of the since Every Simons has been back, we've had back to back solid games from Shane Sharp where he has been a little bit quiet in the fourth quarter. And some of this challenge for the Blazers as they move forward is finding a balance to get Shaden Sharp involved. Some of it is that Sharp needs more stuff called for him. And I think I mean this as much as a criticism of his of Shaden Sharp as I do of the coaching staff. Some players, you say, we don't call plays for them and they find they find a way to score. You'll hear that kind of cliche. Those players score 14 points a night. Those are hustle guys, right? Those are uh, Sean Marion's and and increasingly Harrison Barnes's and like over the years, Tumati Kamara's like those are guys who are just like, you're going to get in where you fit in. Shaden Sharp is too talented to be one of those dudes who you don't call plays for. He needs to be a focal point of the offense. But, and I, I, I mean this truly as, as, as something that Shaden Sharp needs, can focus on and improve on, is like, Shaden Sharp needs to hijack some possessions. When he gets the ball, sometimes he is too egalitarian, and you can see it in the usage rate. Shaden Sharp's usage rate in the fourth quarters of this season is below 20%. But usage rate is a statistic that measures how many possessions you finish. Shots and free throw attempts and turnovers. And I think the problem with Shaden Sharp's game sometimes is that he doesn't force the action. 
You can call it playing the right way or taking what the defense gives him. But if the defense gives you a Jabari Walker shot, they've won. Sometimes the best players have to take bad shots. That is the nature of this thing. You would rather Anthony Simons go 10 for 21 than have sort of some egalitarian perfect offense where worse players are shooting looks the defense wants to give you. Sometimes you got to take it. Because if you let the defense dictate how many wide-open standstill jumpers you give to Jabari Walker and Tumani Kamara, you're going to lose because bad shooters are going to be welcomed jump shooters by opposing defenses. There are times, and you've seen it over the last two games, where Shane Sharp just has to shoot it. Just shoot the ball. Be aggressive. Don't, don't, don't play the right way. Play the aggressive. You are, the, you got, and, and when Lamar Hurd was on the podcast last week, he talked about this too. It's like there's times you got to look around and say, oh, I got to be the guy. And when you do that, you've got to be aggressive. You know who does that? Amphrey Simons. Ant can be a little bit of a ball hog. I thought against the Mavs, Amphrey Simons played great. I thought he was really aggressive going to the rim. He got six free throws. He could have got more, just didn't get a didn't get a great whistle. Um, uh, he's but you process first and then the results later his process was good he attacked the rim and was aggressive um you know he mixed in some of those floaters and hooks that he likes was straight up downhill shoulder squared go to the basket draw contact type of drives i also thought Amphrey simons played pretty well as a facilitator finished with eight assists but assists aren't always a great measure of passing assists are a great measure of making um because your teammates have to make the shots but Ant got, gets the ball out quickly out of double teams i thought he was smart there the next step for ant is the high level reads on the move it's like okay defense is coming i'm driving hard to my right Amphrey simons rarely makes plays off the bounce like that he can but he rarely does it he calls his own number he's a good shooter it's fine um, in some ways you need him to shoot it because the offense is bad so you have to just kind of say hey ant go get it he, simons is also just a much better creator off the dribble pound 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 cross cross tween tween has he cre- has he tween tween has he has he has he step back splash a lot of dribble combos sometimes it's a, sometimes it's too much dribbling you know it when you see it but sometimes it's like there's not going to be a better option than calling my own number. We see it from Malcolm Brogdon when he's healthy too. Brogdon, the best version of Malcolm Brogdon is trying to score for Malcolm Brogdon and then makes plays off of that, right? But he's looking for his own offense first. And I think every Simons is a pretty similar player in that regard, although you hope that Simons can develop into um, more and more point guard skills. And I think he's going to play full-time point guard for much of the rest of the season. And so hopefully he develops there. He's freaking 24. Um, he can, he can get a little bit better. All of that is to say, Shane Sharp's never going to play with a true pass first point guard. And when he did play with a true pass first point guard, someone who doesn't have a lot of individual offense, Shane, uh, Skylar Mays, the offense sucked. <laughs> it sucked. Um, because you need scoring threats. Like you need both. You need pressure and particularly this blazer teams you need pressure you need guys who can put pressure on the defense and score and that will open things up for one another the trick for this team is finding balance some of it is on chauncey billups um, against the mavs chain Sharp came back in with about six minutes left in the fourth quarter and after a minute on the court they called three straight plays for him uh, right on the five minute mark it was very clear every time came across the the floor and I couldn't see it's it's easier. This is easier to tell on TV sometimes than it is in person. But uh, I didn't see if that was a call from the bench or a call from Ant. But they said, "Hey, Shay, come get it." And they ran. They ran. He got the ball at the top of the key or on the wing above the three point line. Let him, let him go to work. Right. Uh, this is getting him touches where he can be aggressive, and he got a he got a pull up jumper. He made a pass to to do up wreath, and then he uh, kept it moving on the next one. He just he just he said, oh, "Okay, okay, we don't have it." Kept it moving. Then. They, you know, he only, he took one shot after that. He had those three straight trips, then one shot the rest of the game after that was a pull-up three that he missed in transition. Um, that is probably about the, that's a, you know, you could ask for probably two more. There was a, there was a late play where Amphrey Simons drove and got um, called for a charge. First he gets called, he gets a block, they they review it, then he's, he gets called for a charge. Um, kind of just charging in the teeth of the defense. I am personally... I want it, I want Amphrey Simons to do that. I want him to be aggressive, so who cares? But he had another one a couple possessions later where he drove in on the right-hand side and couldn't get it out of a crowd trying to make a pass, and it was a turnover. Cut down on that one Amphrey Simons drive to nowhere and have that be a sharp attack. But some of it's like, I think 
they were clearly cognizant enough. We have we have to get Shaden involved. But some of it is Shane's got to hijack possessions. If Tumani Kamara and Scoot Henderson are hijacking possessions early in the in, in the game and, and early in the fourth quarter, Shane's got to hijack them late. And by hijack, I just mean saying when the ball comes to you and the, and the defense cuts off your first action, give it to Duop Reith and demand the ball back and say, I'm going to go to work. Because often you're going to be a better choice. Some of it is Shane Sharp's skill set. He doesn't have the tween-tween. Has he pull-up Jimbo? He has... A one move pull up jumper. He has a, a a three dribble cross cross. He's much more deliberate and slower getting into his stuff. Like his handle has improved, his playmaking has improved. He's clearly better in both those places, but he's not on Am- Amphrey Simon's level in terms of that. He can be a little more aggressive. The team can be a little bit smarter in getting him involved. And Amphrey Simons and Malcolm Brogdon, when they're out there, are going to shoot a bunch. That's just the nature of it. So that's why there have to be both, right? Sometimes Sharp has to say, those dudes are being really aggressive and taking shots that aren't great. I'm going to do that too. And Ant and Malcolm and, and Chauncey have to be cognizant of, Shaden hasn't got a touch. He's freaking 7 of 15 in this game, or I guess 7 of 14 heading down the stretch. Like, he shot well. He has 24 points. We got to get him the ball. But players play. You can call a set and run an action, and if Shaden Sharp doesn't go get his or allows the defense to say, oh, okay, took it away, I'm going to play the right way, this egalitarian approach, equal is not inherently better when you are choosing worse players to take shots, and the, the, the balance for Sharp is to recognize, I'm the best option, it's my time, you know who's going to shoot it? Shaden. And I think that's, some of the balance is just a mindset thing from Sharp. Skills, sure. Like the 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 pull up, the shooting, and sometimes his feet get um, can get a little wonky when he's when he's rushing a pull up, and and his handle isn't great. But like the the skills will get there. The mindset has to get there first. That's the step for him. And if he has an aggressive mindset, and every time he has an aggressive mindset, I think it actually benefits the team because you're having two players that are going to be brutal at attacking, and they're both good shot makers. Simons has been really really good over the last four games. Averaging north of 25 over the last four games, and you can get more out of him. There's more, there is, there is, he's leaving stuff on the table, averaging 25 a game at age 20. That's good news. That is good news. Blazers play the Clippers on Monday evening in LA, a little one off before they're back uh, for a stretch to end the week. Uh, Blazers play the Clippers first game of the season. Well, guess what? The Clippers look a little bit different. They've added James Harden. They've changed the starting lineup and Russell Westbrook is off the bench. The Clippers are much better with, um, since they've changed, they really sucked at the beginning of the James Harden trade, but they are much better with the, with the new balance lineup. Um, They're hard to deal with, but they are so, there is no team more capable of wilting when you punch them in the mouth. The Blazers are going to be outclassed in terms of talent. Um, the Blazers, as I'm recording this, I don't know who's going to be available. If the Blazers are fully healthy, it'll be interesting because when they're fully healthy, they're like tough. They're a tough out because they're a tough out when they're not healthy. They just mostly lose these games. Uh, but uh, th- there is no team more sus- in the. There's no good team more susceptible in the league to getting punked than the Clippers. And I think the Blazers are a perfect punk type team. You got to play tough. And if you play tough, even against a team that is brimming with shot making and shot creation talent, they'll have a chance. Then they're back. Utah on Thursday. Then the weekend, they play Dallas again at home and Golden State. Guess what? I have you covered all week long right here on the show, five days a week, wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Do me a favor and tell your friends about the program. Tell them just like I told you. You can get it wherever you get podcasts or on YouTube. It's free on all platforms each and every weekday. So come back and join us. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.